I'd like to talk to you about structured settlement documentation. Proper articulation of structured settlement terms and releases and other settlement documentation is crucial to all parties to assure that the structured settlement is set up correctly, that all parties achieve their objectives, and to assure case closure. A structured settlement transaction is actually relatively simple. Um, the, this particular flowchart shows the four basic steps of any domestic qualified structured settlement funded with annuity. Let me run through the four steps with you. Number one, there has to be a promise to make future periodic payments uh, in exchange for a release. Number two, there's an assignment of those, uh, that obligation to make those payments to an assignment company, either a qualified assignment company or a non-qualified assignment company, depending upon the type of damages. Then the assignment company, uh, in receiving money from the insurance company or the defendant, uh, and also in, to take, uh, takes on the obligation, and they purchase an annuity or other funding instrument uh, to fund that obligation. Then the f final step uh, is to have the payments paid directly to the payee, uh, whether that's the uh, plaintiff themselves, um, or it could be the plaintiff's trust, if it's a special needs trust, or it could be to the attorney or law firm uh, for structured attorney fees. It's so important that you read the documentation to see if it makes sense. Is there a promise to make future periodic payments? Are the periodic payments clearly spelt out in the document? Are assignment companies and annuity issuers properly identified? Are payees clearly identified? Are the obligors clearly identified? Special care should be taken if there is more than one obligor funding the structured settlement and or more than one annuity issuer or periodic payment provider being used. I want to underscore again, if there's any type of assignment, whether a qualified assignment or a non-qualified assignment, there must be a periodic payment obligation to assign. I would like to underscore that you do not assign the obligation to buy an annuity or the other funding instrument. You assign the obligation to pay the future periodic payments. To add further protection for the plaintiff annuitant, it might be wise to put in strong anti-assignment provisions to dampen the predation by structured settlement secondary market companies on vulnerable and unsophisticated claimants. In cases that require a court order, such as minors cases and death cases, it's important that court orders clearly approve the structured settlements and that there is no conflict between the order and other settlement documents. It's so important because at settlement, the parties want finality. If the documentation is not done correctly and there is an audit, even if that's a rare possibility, it could affect the tax consequences of the transactions in all parties. Generally, that possibly exists if Section 130C of the Internal Revenue Code is not satisfied. If a qualified assignment is invalidated unwound, the payee could lose secured creditor status. For defendants and insurers, however, not following the proper steps could bring about a taxable event, an asset liability mismatch, if the assignment is unwound. Payees can protect themselves by working with an experienced, qualified, and credentialed structured settlement consultant. If you would like to consult on a particular case or have me do a webinar or training on structured settlement documentation for your staff, I can be reached at the number below. Please visit our website at www.forstructures.com for a wealth of information. Thank you for watching. I'm John Darer. Have a great day.